In a recent video, I talked about my own investment portfolio where I hold roughly 20% in the total US bond market and 80% in stocks. But some viewers didn't like that I had bonds in my portfolio. They argued that I'm too young to hold bonds. They argued that bonds haven't been performing well. And I appreciate comments like these, especially those that call me young, but it got me thinking, are they right? Should I dump my 20% in bonds? What exactly is the reason to hold bonds in a portfolio? Well, I've got five reasons to hold bonds in your portfolio, and that is exactly what I'm going to cover in this video. Get ready for exciting bonds talk coming up. The first reason to hold bonds in your portfolio is to reduce volatility. If you have a portfolio that is 100% stocks, things can get wild. The market can be and is very volatile. And that means it can go up and down wildly and without warning. And I'm not even talking about individual stocks, even relatively safe funds like a total stock market index fund or S&P 500 fund can be very volatile. So if you're 100% stocks, you're on this ride completely at the mercy of the movement of the stock market. Now your reward for taking on this volatility is that stocks in the long run tend to outperform other asset classes. So you do get paid for taking on this risk long term. But what if you don't want to be on such a wild ride? What if you're in retirement or nearing retirement? And what if you already have enough to fund your desired lifestyle? Well, at that point, you may want to add some bonds to your portfolio to smooth out that ride and to reduce the volatility. Just like stocks, bond prices can move up and down, especially with the changes in interest rates like we've seen lately. But they are a lot more stable than stocks. So even if you're not nearing retirement, maybe you don't like to see the value of your portfolio drop by huge amounts. Maybe that doesn't feel good to the point where you'd be better off adding bonds to your portfolio. It's like, I really don't like riding roller coasters. I don't enjoy that sinking feeling when you go down those fast drops uh, while everyone around me is laughing and smiling and throwing their hands up in the air trying to make the ride even more thrilling. I'm white knuckling it and holding on for dear life. So I need a ride that's less thrilling. Maybe not a kiddie ride, but just something a little more tame. That's what bonds do for a portfolio. When you're figuring out your asset allocation, bonds are like a dial that you can turn to increase or decrease the volatility. And yes, that will likely increase or decrease your long-term investment returns at the same time, but some of us just can't be on the biggest roller coasters, so we have to turn that dial. Reason number two to hold bonds in your portfolio is rebalancing. One of the great joys of having a set asset allocation with a certain percentage of each type of asset is that you get to rebalance. Whether you do this yearly, quarterly, or just whenever the asset allocation strays too far from what you want, rebalancing is a way to consistently and systematically buy low and sell high. For example, let's say your allocation is 50% stocks and 50% bonds, and the market tanks throughout the year, now stocks are worth less than before. By the end of the year, your asset allocation has shifted, let's say to 40% stocks and 60% bonds. Well, now you get to rebalance. Sell some of the assets that have done better and buy more of the assets that have done worse so that you get back to your desired 50-50 allocation. Maybe the next year the stocks outperform and now you have 60% stocks and 40% bonds. Well, now you can sell more of the winners, stocks, and buy more of the laggard, bonds. This counterintuitive approach to buying more of the assets that aren't performing well is exactly what we humans need to be better investors over the long term and buy low and sell high. Because if we just try to wing it and guess what's going to happen to the market or let our emotions take control, we'll probably end up doing just the opposite, buying high and selling low. We need to be more robotic and mechanical with our investing. Rebalancing with bonds helps us do that. Bonds also act as the dry powder that we need to have on hand to buy more stocks when they're beaten down and on sale. Reason number three to hold bonds in your portfolio is income in retirement. Now, bonds as an asset class are also called fixed income, and that's because they do provide income. There's that interest that they kick off. For individual bonds, this rate is called the coupon. And this is kind of the whole point of bonds. 
As a bondholder, you've lent some institution money and in return, you get a fixed rate of interest. Bonds throw off interest whether you want it or not. And that's why for tax efficiency, it's recommended to place bonds in tax advantaged, preferably pre-tax accounts, such as a traditional IRA or a 401k. In the accumulation phase of investing, this interest that bonds pay doesn't do you any good. It's just reinvested. But in retirement, when you're actually taking income from your investments, well, you can actually use the income that the bond portion of your portfolio is providing. You don't need to sell the bonds to generate the income. It's created automatically, kind of like stocks that pay dividends. And bond yields haven't been all that high until recently, but now they're paying in the four to five percent range. And if you buy enough of these, the income can fund your lifestyle in retirement. And this is a safe, reliable, predictable stream of investment income. Reason number four to hold bonds in your portfolio is diversification. The low correlation of bonds as an asset class with stock provides some stability through diversification. Stocks and bonds don't usually move in the same direction at the same time. When stocks go down by a lot, bonds will often be far more stable. They often go up in value when stocks go down. Consider this period, for example, from 2000 to 2002. You can see in this chart how when stocks were sinking, bonds weren't just stable, they actually were increasing in value. Now, typically the increase in bond values isn't going to be enough to completely offset losses in stock values, but the point is that these two asset classes don't behave the same way and that extra diversification adds more stability to your portfolio. Reason number five, to add bonds to your portfolio is to stick to your plan. When COVID struck in March of 2020, stocks plunged. Were you invested then? If so, what did you do with your portfolio? Did you stoically watch it drop or better yet ignore it, confident that your investing plan was sound and that you would just carry on? Or did you panic and sell? Most market dips aren't as severe as the COVID drop, but if you're the type that watches your portfolio value nervously each day, if you're the type that is prone to make sudden, emotionally driven changes to your investment plan just based on short-term market conditions, you might want to increase the bond portion of your asset allocation. How much should you add? It depends. You don't really want to get scared off from the market and stop investing or sell the stocks you do have. This is not a winning long-term strategy. Even if you're right about selling stocks and the market continues to go down, how will you know then when to get back in? You'll likely end up sitting on the sidelines as the market makes its unpredictable yet inevitable recovery. You'll miss out on the next big rally or the next big bull market. Adding bonds to the portfolio makes the whole portfolio more stable and it helps you stay the course. To have a consistent investing plan that you can stick to no matter the market conditions. You can create a plan with an asset allocation that includes a certain percentage of bonds and then set it and forget it. Focus on savings rate and increasing your income. Even if you're young, financial independence and retirement is a long ways away. If having bonds in your portfolio keeps you in the investing game, then they are extremely valuable for that reason alone. So there you have it. Five reasons to include bonds in your portfolio. Reduce volatility, rebalancing, income and retirement, diversification, and to stick to your plan. In 2022, the classic 60-40 portfolio performed terribly. Some declared it dead. The financial media apparently disagrees, but who cares? I'm a long-term investor and I hope you are too. Let's not get caught up in recency bias and what happened in the last year or two. Let's take a longer term view and focus on an asset allocation that we can stick to for years and decades and focus on more important things like our savings rate. When it comes to investing, it's important to keep a long term perspective. If you're in the accumulation phase, could you forego bonds altogether? Absolutely. If you can stomach the ride, go for it. Otherwise, consider bonds for the reasons discussed in this video. Then find a stock bond mix that works for you and that you can stick to. All right, that's what I have for you in this video. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos on saving, investing, and early retirement. Thanks for watching.